So hi to everyone, the, the brothers and sisters, the friends, the people of God, all dead, in the name of Jesus Christ. So um, we just want to use a few times uh, to share about the superpowers. What What is the Bible prophecy about that? What does the Bible say about that? There is no doubt that we are dealing with superpowers upon the earth. They, they manage our lives. They define a lot of things that we do. They control a lot of things that we go through. We live in the lands of those superpowers. They do a lot of things. We've just come out of a big tragedy, uh, a big issue of coronavirus, which has created chaos, crisis, and travel around the world, where so many of us have seen the lives change. I mean, we spent more than two years over that. Uh, we went through a lot of restrictions on the way you meet, the way you travel, the way you, you, you go to work, and all these things. We have gone through that. And just as that was about to do in the loud, to get away, Today we deal with something else that involves superpowers. It's not the first time, but this time it's a little bit strange. Right after the middle of coronavirus, somebody is about to is striking bombs, and there is basically a threat, a global threat. So that's why I want to see what is it that the Bible says about the superpowers. So, uh, in the Bible, superpowers is not new. In the book of Daniel, God already began introducing and explaining by prophecy through a vision about the superpowers. But the ones we have today, let me list them. They are in two blocks. One of the blocks is the USA and NATO. NATO and its allies. And on the other side, you have Russia and his sympathizers. These are two big blocks that have been around maybe since almost 100 years, since the First World War One, and it solidified itself after the first, the Second World War Two, and then we went through the Cold War until the collapse of the Berlin Wall, I think, in 1991, something like that. But despite of that, these two big blocks of superpowers are still around. They're still doing things as superpower. They didn't go away. So what is it that the Bible says about that? That is what we want to share to in this moment. So um, let's read what the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Second Peter. Um, I mean, I have it here in, in, in French because I did one post in French. Second Peter, uh, chapter one, verse twenty-one. Uh, this is what the Bible says about uh, the word of God. Let us read it as the Bible says it. Let me move my head a little bit like this. Move myself there. So the Bible says that it's for prophecy never came by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at the book of Daniel that speaks about superpowers. But before we go, let's keep in mind that prophecy never came by the will of men. But the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the men of God, they speak not because they got affected by the social media, not because of the polls that they are looking into, not because they want to please to anyone, but the holy men of God spoke as being moved by the Holy Spirit. So when men speak by the Holy Spirit, and that means God himself is involved in conveying a message. And why would God do that? The only reason why God would do that, if, if he finds out that there is something about to happen, 
which will be beyond the understanding and the knowledge of the wise and the intelligent. When God sees that something major is going to happen around us, that even if we come together, all of our wise men, all of our intelligent men, all the scientists and the professors, the, the, the witches and the holy men of God come together and try to find out what it is, we will not get it. And at that moment, God, because of his grace and his love, he will then send a prophecy. So concerning the superpowers, God has spoken in a major and a major way. Not just through a prophet, but through a man who represents also the head of the superpower. So, so in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel went in captivity uh, around the, the year 600. They were taken into captivity. But that captivity happened after Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah and other prophets prophesied about the end of the existence of the state of Israel as an independent state. They prophesied that there will be an end to that state. And that was according to the will and the prophecies from God. And as a fulfillment to those prophecies, a king called Nebuchadnezzar got into the land and took them as captives and brought them into Babylon. As they went to the Babylon, Daniel and his friends were taken by the king to be his advisors because back then uh, the kings, when they conquer a land, they try to do the best to get the best men in, in the other side and bring them closer to them so that they make sure they get the best advice that will keep them to be and continue to be powerful and strong. So Daniel was among those. So one day the king had a dream. And when he got his dream, he woke up, he forgot everything. Then he called all the wise men, the witches, the magicians, the intelligent men, and told, asked them to, to reveal the dream that he got because he forgot. In that way, he will believe that if they give him an interpretation, the interpretation will be correct. But as he made his request, all the wise men complain and say the request from the king is just not feasible. And the king got mad. He treated them to be crooks, so he was prepared to behead and kill all of them. So Daniel got the news, and he went and asked the king, please give me a time to go, pray, and maybe by praying, God will reveal the dream you got. So Daniel went to pray, and God answered. And when God answered, he came back to the king to reveal the dream that belonged to the king, but the king forgot. So this is the dream. Daniel saw a man that had four pieces, four parts. The man was a metallic man. His body was made of metal, of solid materials of different nature. So where does he explain? He say. Here, this is what the king saw. You saw one, the king saw the head of the man. He saw the head made of gold. And he told the king of Babylon that the head which was of gold represents your, your rule. You are that golden head. And God has decided to make him king of kings. That what Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar about the dreaming. Then he went to the second part and then told that king that in the second part, this is what you saw. So as we see in this um, picture, Daniel basically um, explained to the king, he, he represent the gold. And the second part, which is his chest, represent the silver. So the gold is precious. 
but less stronger than the silver. Then he moves on and present the next part of the vision that he saw. Now he presents that the lower part at his bosom here is bronze. Bronze, which is much stronger than silver, is now the other part. But the first part he presented was Babylon. The second part, Daniel named it. It was the Persians. Actually, in chapter 5 of Daniel, the day they were having a party, there was a writing on the wall. And then as Daniel came to explain what was in the wall, the Persians, they came and they conquered the king of Babylon. That was the end of his rule. And the Persians, they took over. They stayed in. They built a stronger, a more powerful system, more power kingdom, the Babylonian. They made sure that the Babylonian will not wake up and over, overrule them. They basically crushed the previous, the previous system, inherited from that system. That was the, system, the way of doing it. Take all the wisdom they could take, all the knowledge, all the wealth from there, and then use it and try to build up on top of it. And in the book of Daniel, as we see, the book of Daniel speaks a lot. Throughout the book, Daniel got more visions that were basically just trying to explain or, or, or which were another version of the, the Daniel chapter 2. So Daniel went on and then basically he named the third power that will took over, take over, which are the Greek Empire. Daniel did not leave until the Greek Empire, he died, but he named it. So later on, based on history, the Greek Empire came and overtook the Persian Empire and built a system much stronger, much bigger, much more powerful in such a way that the Persians will not take over over again. So this third part of the metallic uh, symbols, which is represented by the bronze, was basically uh, prophesied and explained through the vision uh, that Daniel explained to the king. After he finished, Daniel went down and explained the last part. The last part is where we want to show the things for today. He said that the last part which is the legs and the feet and the toes. He said the legs, which are the last part, are made of iron. Which is interesting to see from Daniel. He was a prophet, but he was not trying to tell the king sweet things like many prophets may do today. You go to a king, to a leader, you just prophesy success and wealth to him. Daniel was a truthful prophet of God. He told that man, you are the God, but there will be an end to your system. You will not stay forever. There will be a kingdom that will take over after you. And in fact, the day he was explaining another prophecy uh, for that same king, telling him the truth that you have been put on the balance and then you have been found light, the prophecy got fulfilled. So this is the prophecy that God gave in a certain way through, beginning through the king who got the vision and forget, but then send it to Daniel who got also the vision and got the explanation of it. This is where God basically start to explain the superpowers that will rule men until the coming of Jesus. So in this place, let us see, this superpower does not mean that those people who were in that super, super system are the best. No, it just means that it represents the mindset of all mankind. It represents the way men think. It represents the way men plan things. Any man, any system of men, black or white, will end up establishing this kind of system which is a system made of kingdom that try come in and crush the others. Another one come and crush another one. Another one come and crush another one. Until they crush it other to the end. And then the last one become much stronger, learn from the weaknesses of the others and try to position itself so that no one may come and crush them. This is what happens here. So the last one is iron. Iron basically itself is a metal 
that's so strong that you cannot easily bend and destroy. It's a metal that gives strength to any structure that anyone may build. Uh, when people build concrete to give it strength for bridges or for building, you need to put iron inside. Iron is a major building blocks for anything that can last for a long time, anything that can resist any other powers. That is iron. So this is how uh, Daniel Dan came to this last one and then explained what it meant. So let's read in uh, the book of Daniel chapter 2 uh, and then we read on we read on verse 2 to um, verse 2 uh, chapter 2 verse 40 this is what Daniel said and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues everything and as iron that breaks all this so shall it be shall it break in pieces and bruises so daniel described that the last kingdom represented by two legs made of iron represent a kingdom that will have such a strength and power to break anything that comes across it and then he continues describing the legs the fourth part and whereas Thou sowest the feet and the toes, part of the potter's clay and part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided, but they shall be in need of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with merry clay, verse 42, and as the two of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. And Daniel continues, that's not the last. He continues explaining, verse 43, And, and whereas thou sowest the iron mixed with merry clay, they shall mingle with themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to other another even as iron doeth not mingle with clay so here we see daniel uh, giving the explanation about that fourth part of man which is made of iron and he explains that represents the kingdom that will be so strong this kingdom is not the kingdom of god it's man's kingdom it's not an invisible kingdom. It's a visible kingdom among men. It'll be so strong that it will break anything. He said, break anything. And based on the Bible prophecy, that kingdom that came after the Greek Empire is the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is the one that came and took over after the Greeks. It used to be a tiny village that grew up stronger and stronger until Julius Caesar is the one that came as a general of the army. He went on, subdued everybody in the Greek Empire. He destroyed everyone with the power of iron, the strength of iron, like a, an army general. He subdued everybody, killed anyone that opposed him, and brought everybody under his rule. But yet, he was not a king nor an empire. He was just a general. He was by himself being assassinated, he was killed by people, and then his nephew took over. His nephew is the one is called Octavius, or we can say Augustus Caesar. His name was Octavius, and then after he became empire, uh, emperor or king, he called himself Augustus Caesar. And then he named his uncle to become an emperor. 
after his uncle already died. That man took over 30 years before Christ was born. So let's say this. Um, so the uh, that king, which is uh, Octavius or uh, Augustus Caesar, took the power 30 years before Christ, and he died about 15 years later. And then it's during this rule that Jesus Christ was basically born. And that system, which is the Roman Empire, was established by Augustus Caesar. By, he named his uncle to be the emperor, even though he, his uncle was already dead. The real emperor, the real king of the king, Roman Empire was Augustus Caesar. And him, he then established the Roman Empire with the ironing fist that we know. He put it in place. That Roman Empire inherited the mentality of Julius Caesar. It was such a system that was always ready to crush its enemy with full force. You attack it, they attack back to crash. They, they came in power with a mindset to conquer the whole world and establish the worship of Caesar. If you don't worship Caesar, you are doomed to die. That was the philosophy there. It is during that empire, during that first rule of that first emperor, that Jesus Christ was born. When Jesus Christ was born, the one who was in power was Augustus Caesar, which was the nephew of Julius Caesar. They were so ready to crash that when Jesus was born, Herod heard that the baby was born to be king. What he did is he went to crush the babies. Killed babies, no pity. They had no mercy, no grace. They killed the babies wherever they could find them because that is their mind. They have to crush anything that comes to threaten their system because they had a plan to establish all over the world the rule and the worship of Caesar. That's the fourth kingdom that Daniel revealed. That kingdom crushed so many. They crushed Jesus upon the cross. They crushed the disciples. They stoned them. It is during that time, a lot of prophets, the Maccabee who were came in the system, they were crushed by the Roman empires. They crushed the Jews who tried to oppose them. They crushed. They just had the mindset of crushing, destroying, killing the enemy to the last. That's the Roman Empire that came. So it's during that moment, it is during that Roman Empire that Jesus Christ was crucified. The Bible had prophesied that as well in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 to 26. In that part of the Bible, it says that the people that shall come will destroy the city of Jerusalem and will see destroy the temple. And the Roman Empire destroyed the city of Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. This is the iron. That's the fourth kingdom, the iron kingdom. They killed Jesus, killed the babies that were born during Jesus' time. They killed a lot of disciples. They destroyed Jerusalem and they killed, they destroyed the temple. And they planned to destroy Christianity. A lot of the emperors that came, the kings that came there, they had in plan to, to wipe out Christianity. That was their goal. But they failed until Constantine the first, who then, after conquering all Europe, after enlarging and spreading the Roman Empire, enlarging it so big, he found out that Christianity was so well established inside the villages that he could do nothing to crush it anymore. He decided that he became 
Christian. He became Christian because he gave up. He gave up the fight. He saw that the, the people that his grandfather, his grandfathers tried to destroy, actually, were so many in the villages that if he would crush them, he would basically get into destroying his own kingdom. He gave up, became a Christian. But then as the king, the Roman Empire progressed, he progressed with a lot of division, with a lot of fightings, until it got basically replaced by another system that is still the Roman Empire, the Roman Catholic Church. So the bishops from the capital of Rome, because of political influence, they then became more powerful than the other bishops. That which happens always. Those who live in the capital, they always seem to prevail. It was such a point that around the 10th and 11th century, there was a split between the Roman Catholic Church in the West and the Orthodox Church in the East. They were not just religious, those systems, they were also political. That's where we have today's split came from. So those who went in the East developed their own political system. They, own, they kept doing their own religious things. Those who, went in the, those who went in the East, those who went in the West, they also did the same. They developed their own system. And then they grew up like that. But they were antagonistic, almost trying to compete against each other. But they went through so much fighting much trouble that seemed to be basically helping them to improve the strength of the iron that they possess. It's actually during the Roman Empire that the treatment of iron became so well, so better. They start, we started making guns, you know, fire guns. During that rule of Roman Empire, people start making bombs of so much. And all these kingdoms perfect themselves to become stronger and learning from their weaknesses. So they didn't begin today. As they were doing that, they were actually learning from the past. They were inheriting the mindset that came from years and centuries back. That's how they built the systems that we have today. They are just building the mindset of crushing any enemy as much as they can, if they have the possibility. The two sides. The two sides represent the two legs of iron that we see in that Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel's prophecy. These are the two legs. And Daniel said, they will be there, but they shall be crushed later on. So as we learn from this, uh, these two systems that got even more, uh, more divided, more extreme after the First World War, War, War and the Second World War, where we see the communist system with Russia and we see the capitalistic system with the USA. They became so polarized after the Second World War until today. That's why what we see today with Ukraine is no new. We have seen it also with the US going into Iraq, Libya, and other places. We see it with France going in Ivory Coast and so many places. Uh, the, 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 we, see, we saw how uh, Great Britain went against uh, Argentina, I think in the 90s or 80s there. Uh, quite a few things. We saw how U.S. went against Peru, taking uh, Emmanuel Norega. They have done all this, all of them. Russia is doing it. The U.S. have done it, and France, and so on. It's no new. They crush you when you are weak. They don't care. When you are weak, they come and crash. Something that I think is sad for many of us is when, I, when is it going to end? Because some people who are upset about Russia would want it to end today. Those who are upset for the U.S. and the Western would want it to end today. But in the prophecy of Daniel, this is what he says. Daniel said that they are divided, that we see. 
we have two blocks, the west and the east. They are so divided, they fight against each other, but they possess in themselves the power of the iron. And there is another thing that they do, uh, that we need to mention, that they will make alliances with men around the world. The Roman Empire and its system has gone around the world, made alliances. We have the UN, which is the biggest alliance. They made alliances in sport, in science, in social, in business. They made alliances all over the world. We cannot really fool ourselves. They did make alliances around the world with China, with India, with all of Africa, all of Asia. They did make alliances and influence people to, to take their system. We're writing using the Latin alphabet. It's the most popular writing in the world. That kingdom is a global kingdom. It has become a global kingdom. That what God prophesied, but on top of that, it has two super power that represent the two legs of Daniel's men, of King Nebuchadnezzar's men, of Daniel chapter 2. Two legs, two super power, made of iron, feet made of clay and iron. The clay means alliances with men. So if you want to fight them, you better make sure that you are more iron than what they are. If you can't fight them, there is another way. Become the clay and make alliances. That's what China is almost trying to do. India is trying to do. Make alliances. Maybe that's the way you can find your way. But if you want to fight, the way some Islamic state or Islamic rebels and do, you can try. That's up to you. If you can be more iron than them, you may overtake and become another leg. Replace them. Overtake them and replace. And become a leg. One of the legs. But otherwise, these two legs will be there according to Daniel's prophecy. He says this, they will be there and they will only be crushed when there will be a stone that comes from some unknown place will come and crush this image, destroy it, break it, and establish the everlasting eternal kingdom. That's the only time that this system will collapse. Basically, according to Daniel, these two systems, these two legs of this man will, pre will exist until Jesus comes. We are stuck with them. The reason we are stuck with them is this. Many of us, children of God, are part of that system. In Russia, there are children of God who are part of it. They enjoy it. They live in it. They survive in it. Their families are in it. In the Westerns, there are children of God. They live in it. Their families are established in it. They live in it. They make their lives in it. So if God would want to crush either one of them now, He's going to crush his own children who are part of it, just the way Daniel was part of Babylon. So the only way God can really come and crush it is when Jesus comes at the resurrection, when he will judge all the evil and the good. So that's how these things will go. We feel sad for those who are going in pain today. It's very sad for those who have been through the troubles and the wrongdoing of those systems is very sad, as we can tell. There is not so much we can tell based on the prophecies. This is where they will be. But there is one word of wisdom you can benefit if you play the game by looking at their weak point, which is alliances with men. This is the weak point that God has given. Play, we can play with that. But I don't know whether we can play it very well because we like revenge. We are just like them. You do make evil, you want to plan to return evil. That's where we are. But to go make alliances, make friends, is really very tough. But anybody can try for that. But if you want to fight, make sure that you really prepare 
your iron metal that will be much stronger so you can replace them because if you don't replace them they will wake up from their weaknesses and they will come back and crush you so the two superpowers of the kingdom of God the two superpowers that God presented they are of kingdom not kingdom of God but kingdom of man so they are the two last superpowers from the kingdom of men. They will be replaced by the kingdom of God. What is that replacement? It will not be the way they do it. They come and crush you with the power of guns and weapons. When God comes to replace them, he will replace them with the power of the resurrection. When the resurrection shall happen, that is the big stone that will fall upon their legs. The resurrection will crush all those. They will, they, they, they will be crushed in their mind. Because they will look for a, they are used to attacking with guns. But when the resurrection will happen, they will see no way of using their guns or their weapons, their money. There will be no way they can respond against such a system. It's the resurrection. The resurrection will break their legs. The resurrection will break their mind. The resurrection will make Putin kneel down and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The resurrection will make Joe Biden or whichever leader bow down and confess Jesus Christ is Lord. The resurrection will make all these generals, all these Mighty men who make other cry every day will cause them to cry and shed their tears, will make them mourn for days. The resurrection will make that system collapse forever. That's how God is planning to crush this image which may which is made of gold, silver, bronze, and iron and clay. God will crush it during the day of the resurrection. So what you and me would want to be is to get ready for the resurrection. Get ready for the resurrection. That is the day where the superpowers who make men cry, who, who, who subdue others Ill illegally, who are so unjust to mankind, will all collapse. Get ready for the resurrection. May God bless you richly. So we wanted to talk about these superpowers. But there is one more point that we will talk about. Before the resurrection could happen, before that stone could crush this image that you see, there is something that the Antichrist will do right before getting crushed. And he will use these superpowers to do something to introduce idolatry. We will look at that in the coming video. God willing. May God bless you abundantly. That was Pastor Sammy from the Church Trumpet of Christ in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Stay blessed.